Wednesday, it's Wednesday 13 of the Murder Dolls, and you are watching MPJ. for their band, The Murder Dolls. Uh, welcome. Uh, you guys are actually um, out in support, getting ready to release your next album. It comes out August 31st. Uh, what can you tell us a little about it? Yeah, um, so our first uh, Murder Dolls album uh, since 2002, so it's been eight years since the first release, and it's, uh, yeah, it's been, it's took a while, you know, I mean, it's just, the idea has been kind of floating through our heads for a couple years, but we just didn't know if we were going to do one again, if we weren't going to do it, so about a year ago, it's like the conversation with Joey and I kind of started getting more serious, and then, you know, and then we said, all right, we're going to do this, so we finally just marked it down, made time to go do it, and went in in March, and, uh, we had about eight years worth of material to choose from, so uh, that was a that was a good thing to have. So we didn't have to go in from scratch and just go, all right, let's start writing songs. We had over 60 some ideas, went in with 30 that we, and then we chopped it down to 18. Uh, so eight years is a long time. Were some of those first ones, like ideas, and songs, made it onto the album, or was it more the later? Uh, it's both. I mean, there's there's songs. Um, there's two on the record. Uh, Chapel of Blood and My Dark Place Alone, we actually wrote those in the studio, so those weren't even existing prior to that. Uh, but then there's other stuff that, you know, I can tell, just because I know I can go, all right, well, that was wrote closer to the time Murder Dolls got off tour, because I can feel that kind of vibe in it. And then there's stuff later on, and uh, there's stuff that I wrote a couple weeks before we went in the studio for Murder Dolls too, and it had a whole different direction. That's why the record just comes off, and I like to call it like a roller coaster, you know, it just, it's, it's all over the place. It's not just one, one style of music this time, and, uh, you know, we just it, it, it would have been easy to come back and do what we did the last time, but we didn't want to do that. We wanted to change it up and just keep people guessing because once people got you figured out, then it's boring. Right. And, of course, I mean, eight years is a long time, so, of course, there's going to be a lot of newer fans, too, That and then the older fans, of course, will be looking for some of probably the older songs that right, right. you had and excited for the new stuff as well. Um, now, you said one of the newer songs that you wrote in the studio was... Uh, um, My Dark Place Alone, which is the first video in the single. Thank you. Yep. Um, and uh, can you tell us a little about the video? Oh, it was it was the most fun I've ever had during a video shoot because they usually suck, and it's just because you've got so many people around you, like you know, depending on how it, how it's done. But um, it didn't take that long. We shot it all on, on green screen, um, but it was just it was fun because we just cover ourselves in all this black. Uh, I'm not even quite sure what it was, but uh, it was goo, black goo, <laughs> and uh, it was cool because it just it provided a whole different vibe for the song, and you know, because it's you know always doing videos when you got to get right in front of a camera and there's 50 people standing around you with boom stands and looking at you and you got to be into it, you know, that's hard to do sometimes. But when, with this video and just having all this stuff on us, it just it made it so much easier. We were like tar monsters, and uh, so it. For me, it, it made it a lot easier to perform and, and get the vibe of the song. So uh, it turned out it turned out great, and it has nothing to do with the oil spill. Even though it looks like it, we could have crawled out of that. Yeah. Um, so on your newest album release, uh, "Women and Children Last," who actually came up with that name? It was a drunken idea I came up with about four in the morning, and uh, we were going to call the album originally it was we called "The World According to Revenge," and then. Um, we just thought that sounded a little too serious, and then. Yeah. Cool name. I like that. And then, which is the actual intro of the album, so the title's still on there. But uh, you know, it was just one of those things I was writing down in the book one day, and I wrote "Women and Children Last," and I looked at it and started laughing. And I called up Joey, and I was like, and I woke him up because I was in L.A. and he was in Iowa, and so of course I called him and he's in bed. And I'm like, he's like, hello. And I'm like, "Women and Children Last." And he just started laughing. We both started laughing. I was like, that's it. Mark it. Done. <laughs> so it just had the old tongue-in-cheek kind of humor vibe that, you know, we want people not to think we're coming out being so, so serious, even though there are more serious subject matter on the record. But uh, the title alone is just it's fun. And you guys actually, with your album, you have um, a special limited edition. It's a first aid. There's, there's actually three versions of the record. There's going to be the original one. 
uh, and then with uh, no bonus tracks, and there's a there's a digipack that has all the bonus tracks and a DVD uh, of five songs from our uh, Key Club show we did a month ago, and then the other edition is the Last Aid Kit, so the survival kit in it, you know, so it's got the uh, record, it's got a pill bottle, it's got everything you need to survive on Planet Murder Dolls. Um, it's also going to be released with three bonus tracks. Can you talk about that a little bit and give fans like a sneak peek and thrill? Uh, the bonus tracks are, I mean, uh, it wasn't that we didn't like them or anything. It, it just, once we got done with all the, the record and recording everything, we just felt like those songs didn't necessarily fit the whole vibe of the record. But the thing about those bonus tracks, those were songs that were uh, written, or at least the idea was written pretty much during the time Murder Dolls were, were touring or right when we got off the road. And uh, so you, I think you can totally hear that old, the first album sound with those bonus tracks. So maybe that's something the fans will like if they don't like the rest of the record. So we'll find out. No, they're going to love the album. So. I think so. Uh, their parents are going to hate it. All your parents are going to hate it. It's just a, we actually have two warning labels on our album. We had it purposely done that way. We have one that says parental advisory and one slapped on top that says we are fucking serious. <laughs> Our life. True story. I mean, maybe the only band that's done that yet. I don't know. That's, did you do that yourself? You, yeah. yeah, really? <laughs> yes. Um, you're supposed to go on tour sometime this year with Alice Cooper and Rob Zombie. When is that supposed to happen? You heard that's a rumor, huh? I, I cannot confirm or say that. It's on your site. It's on our website? Yeah. Mm, I'm not supposed to say anything. But that's what I was told. I don't know. I've heard a rumor about it too, but that's all I can say. Yeah. <laughs> can you talk about though? Because I also heard you guys are going to do the Ozfest in yes. in uh, Europe, right? Yeah, we have so much stuff, and it sucks because I could wish I could tell everybody what our touring plan. They only see one date on our site, and then it becomes like, oh, you're only doing one show. Our tour starts today. The record comes out, and we'll be in Europe, and we're doing support slots for some bigger acts, but we can't announce that because. We have to let them do it first. So I'm like going, I want to tell you guys all this great stuff we're doing. And uh, but now we we start touring the day the record comes out, and uh, we're in Europe till the 18th, which is Ozfest, and uh, that's our first show back in the UK in seven years. And we go on right before Corn and Ozzy, which is pretty impressive for a band that's been out of the light for so long. And uh, but we our, we had our biggest our biggest. Uh, reaction and crowd and fans were in the UK so I'm assuming that's why that's happening and then uh so that's gonna be great playing with Ozzy doesn't suck playing Ozfest in the UK is just, it's gonna be amazing and then uh then we come back and we uh rehearse again and we go out in the US on a tour the rumor tour. alleged alleged tour rumor tour that might be on the website I, <laughs> no, I haven't checked my the internet I don't know I haven't given you the okay so mom's the word <laughs> Dot net rumors. Soon. I don't even go where I saw it. Yeah, on your YouTube channel, you have put up some Mad Manager videos, and I was just wondering, like, what? I like the one with the butter knife. I actually do like the one with the butter. I was laughing so hard for that one. Find a sharper knife than that. Knife, and it was a butter knife, and I was like, you're calling your manager butter. <laughs> I mean, I, I, what I'm saying is I have this knife. I have this knife, and I keep saying that, and that's from uh, Texas Chainsaw Master, the hitchhiker. They keep, they pick him up, and he's like, I have this knife. So we just walk around constantly. We have everybody in this crew and just around the whole festival now, just, you know, the, uh, catching on to my and Joey's little sayings, which is, uh, I have this knife, and the other one's, I need this from the movie The Jerk. So if you don't know any of that stuff, check it out. But uh, the Mad Manager thing is... Um, is Sully our, our tour manager and uh, we just give him as much hell as we possibly can and uh, it's fun he's a fun sport about it so uh, it's, it's good times and we've got a lot of great fan reactions from it too so expect a lot more Mad Managers coming on this tour and uh, and Murder Pranks we got that coming up again too so uh, see we, we, we multitask things we, we like to we like to keep it fun for the fans because this is the kind of stuff we used to see our favorite bands do or wish our favorite bands would do and it just shows a different side to what what we are. The murder pranks was pretty funny too. So I saw the one where you guys I think called your manager about the guy in the room to kick him out or something that was hysterical. So what is your if you mentioned Texas Chainsaw, is that like your actual favorite horror movie then? Or it's it's, it's one of my favorite. The first two chain, chainsaw movies are two of my favorite movies of all time, but uh but 
but I think the reason I like it is because they're funny to me. They're like they're they're complete comedy to me. Most people go, "Oh, it's the most terrifying movie I've ever seen." It's like, I laugh at that like I laugh at you know Airplane or The Jerk or any of those kind of movies like that. Those are like my favorite kinds of movies. Even though I'm covered in horror movie tattoos, you'll find me most of the time. Yeah. Monsters. <laughs> it's comedy. It's comedy. It's horror. It's everything. Yeah. And I love I love the Nightmare Before Christmas. Actually, I love. Thank you. Everyone has these tattoos now. I maybe wish I wouldn't have got them, but oh well. They still look really cool. Thank you. Yo, you wish you didn't have those? The yeah, Nightmare Before Christmas? The Nightmare Before Christmas. I, I mean, I like them. I, I dig that movie, but it's just now. It's Tim Burton. It okay. became so everyone has them now. It's like I want to, I want to cut that part of my arm off or put some little sticky notes the over. That's going to be the next installment of the Mad Man, right? Yeah. Cut his arm off yeah. with a butter knife. I got your knife. <laughs> <laughs> Cutting up my tattoos. I think I could sort of saw it. It'd be a little more like a. And if you were in Texas, it'd be a Texas chainsaw tattoo, tattoo, tattoo massacre. Yes. That's, it. That's the new horror movie you guys could do. We'll shoot it. What if we're not? What if we're not in Texas? Well, when you read them. All right. Well, Connecticut. 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 Chainsaw Thanks. massacre. Okay. <laughs> Coming to a theater near you. <laughs> the worst rumor. movie ever. The never. Rumor. 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 Yeah. Uh, it would be the worst. The worst movie never filmed. <laughs> no. Yeah. We would do it Ed Wood style. It would work. Do you have anything else that you need to plug? Plug. plug. Uh, my ears. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, uh, no, the like record. Things, right? no, the, yeah, the record comes out August thirty first. It's our, it's our first record in eight years. We're excited, and uh, you know, we can't wait to get on tour and you know destroy everyone in front of us. That's our mission: is to attack and kill and do it over again. <laughs> with, yeah. with the but <laughs> butter. But actually, it's probably you're on tour, so you probably wouldn't have like a real butter knife. You'd probably have to have a plastic butter knife. Which is better because it's serrated edges. No, we've got a whole bus full of knives and guns and everything. Really? Yes. Sharp knives or? They're always sharp. Oh, they're what always kind of knife is good if it isn't sharp? That, that, the knife in the video was actually sharp. I, I cut oh, myself. I cut, my, cut myself. I had to wear a Band-Aid. <laughs> crazy. Rock and roll was crazy. A was it a horror Band-Aid? No. No, no monster. No, no. No SpongeBob. No. Nothing. Uh, but we'll let you go. Thank you very much for joining us today. Um, we're here again with Wednesday 13 of Murder Dolls. Uh, the new album comes out August 31st. Women and Children Last. Uh, remember, support your artists and buy their albums. It's been a video edition of Musician Photo Journal. Thank you.